I don't know what that noise was. Doesn't the PlayStation have a lot of great first party exclusives? I think it does. Actually, right now is the best time to do this because with Ghost of Tsushima just releasing, we're at the end of this console generation. So rather than me try and do a video like that last one with just uh, oh, games I can't live without, just ugh. how about I just do the exclusives and go through my top 10 favorites for this entire system? Since we are at the end of this generation of systems and Ghost of Tsushima being probably the last big first party release, I'm pretty safe to just make that video now. I'm really excited to do it because while I have talked about a lot of the games I'm holding under my arm right now, there are a couple that I never got to talk about that I really love. This list, just my personal opinion and my preferences and my experiences with these games. Where they rank on my list doesn't invalidate how they may rank on your list. We all have different wants, needs, and experiences with video games, you can leave your list down below. Don't shame me for mine. Don't shame me. With all that said, how about we just get stuck into it? I'm excited. It's been a while since I've made a PlayStation video. It's good to be back. You know why Raycon thinks they're awesome? <laughs> Probably because their earbuds started about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. Okay. Maybe they offer their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns. Good for you, Raycon. Way to show off. But uh, do you know why I think Raycon is awesome? Other than the fact that they sponsor my channel every month and it really helps me out. Also because I use these things daily. Even celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Gus Johnson, and Arlo, they're all obsessed with their Raycons. And I'm pretty sure that Arlo doesn't even have ears. I think. <laughs> yeah, I listen to my Raycons when I'm out here in the garage, pretending to lift weights, but actually just listening to podcasts. It's good when I'm out here so that I'm not blasting music for all my neighbors to hear and judge me for my taste. What's up, Gary? I, I work on the internet. It's a whole thing. Raycon's everyday E25s, these bad boys, are their best model yet. <sighs> so it's actually really hot out here. Um, so if you wouldn't mind clicking that link below or going to buyraycon.com forward slash beat'em-ups to get 15% off your order, I'd appreciate it. So I could go back inside, get on with the video. All right, I'm technically cheating right off the bat. While I do have some special mentions near the end of this list, I didn't just want to throw Astro Bot into a special mention. So instead, it's just my unofficial number 11. The PlayStation VR and I have had a lot of good times together. Just none of those experiences were good enough to crack the top 10. That said, this game is incredible. I have reviewed it once already on the channel and went through how much I absolutely adored it. But to summarize really quickly, this game feels like a Nintendo game in every sense from just the at its core fun gameplay to the cutesy visuals and just the unique approach the developers took to designing each level if you love all of those fantastic nintendo platformers and you also have that interest in vr this is the perfect blend of both of those things it is by far one of the best vr games i have ever played and deserves to at least be talked about in this video death stranding is my number 10 on this list. This might upset some people. I actually really enjoyed this game. It's not perfect and it has a lot of flaws and chapter three is very slow, but there's also a lot I loved about this game. I enjoyed my experience playing Death Stranding so much that when I finally did finish the game, which took me hours and weeks after launch, I wrote up a whole script for a review and I tweaked that script and I kept going back to that script and I just couldn't decide what I wanted to say because everything I wrote felt like I was trying Trying to justify why people didn't like the game and it didn't really come together so i never ended up making the video even though i did write a script that in the end I was very proud of. What I really tried to tackle in the review that didn't end up happening is why the game is so slow paced. And I feel like if I summarize it, it's not going to have the same meaning, but here we are. In the world they now live in, Sam Porter is a one in a million kind of guy. So when you're given that job to trudge from one side of the United States to the other, it's a dangerous, but also very boring job, which is why he didn't want to do it. And I believe that Kojima wanted you to feel in the first few chapters how boring his job was. 
and it worked. Yeah, it was very boring, and a lot of people couldn't even get through the first few chapters, and I don't blame anyone for that. But at about the fourth chapter, Sam finds himself getting tangled up in a storyline much bigger than he anticipated when he accepted the job. I just instantly got engrossed at that point. I went from almost giving up on the game to there being not a chance of me putting it down. The action, and especially the story, had me totally gripped and immersed in this world. It's very interesting to look at it retrospectively with the current climate we're dealing with now. In this world, everyone lives behind closed doors. You travel miles to get to these places and no one even bothers to open their doors and come and meet you face to face. Everything is digital. The world runs on likes and working together as a community, but through the digital world. A lot of people criticize that as Kojima trying to make some weird statement about the way the world is heading. And here we are just months later and this game couldn't be more relevant than it is now. By the end of this game and the final moments of storytelling, I was in tears and not many mediums from movies, TV shows to video games have moved me to the point of tears. Oh, I was, I was struggling to hold them back. Needless to say, I was invested and I really enjoyed the game. I'd love to dive further into this game, but I don't know, maybe there's another chance somewhere down the line. The Final Fantasy VII Remake. This one might be a lot higher on most of your lists, but I think you'll understand when I say, uh, the reason why it's lower on mine, I don't have nostalgia for the game. I never really played it back in the day. I didn't get very far, and I really don't remember anything that I played. Final Fantasy IX resonated with me a lot more. I adored Final Fantasy IX. From the moment I played it, and replayed it, and replayed it, I was in love with that game. Final Fantasy IX was, for me, me, what Final Fantasy 7 is to the rest of the world, it seems like. So when this remake came around and the entire world exploded with excitement, there was me thinking, Shame it's not Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> and I didn't think when I played it, it would ever hit a top 10 list for me because I didn't have that nostalgia. But this remake, it's freaking good. <laughs> As someone who doesn't hold the original very close to his heart, I feel like they, they did a great job remaking it and retelling the story. Oh, the combat is perfect. I have never experienced a real-time action combat system being Ugh perfected in this way. Switching between all the characters, taking those split seconds to slow down time and plan your next move. For those that did finish it, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say they really focused on the characters' fates and them wanting to change their own fates. And I feel like considering they really wanted to expand on this entire universe, the most interesting way to do that would be to shake things up a little bit and having the characters themselves decide to change their own fates and change the the outcome over what was predetermined for them, that predetermined story being the original game was a very clever way of not really breaking the fourth wall, but having these characters break out of their expectations from the fans and people that played the original game and go in a new direction. A very